Hi, I'm Richard from DP Review, and I'm here with Canon's Chuck Westfall to talk about some of the high-end products Canon has just introduced. Chuck, would you like to tell us uh, about these two cameras we have in front of us? Yes, we're introducing the new EOS 5DS and 5DSR. Uh, these are cameras that basically set a new bar, a new level for high resolution in the 35 millimeter DSLR format at 50 megapixels. Uh, the difference between the SR versus the standard S is basically in the low pass filter. It has a different kind of low pass filter compared to the standard one in the 5DS. Uh, that basically cancels out the blurring effect of the low-pass filter to create the sharpest possible image on the sensor. So where do these two cameras fit in compared to the existing models? Uh, for instance, how do you see the audience for this being different from uh, the audience for, say, the 5D3? Uh, now, the, the biggest difference there, besides the, uh, the obvious resolution of 5D3 being the 22 megapixel camera, uh, is that the 5D3 really has got a lot more capability in terms of low light. Uh, it has a, a actual uh, high end on the ISO up to 102,000, where on, on the 5DS we're looking at about 12,800 at the top end. Also, uh, for people who are shooting video, uh, the, uh, the video capabilities that are on the 5D Mark III are several, there are several different features on that camera that, uh, that make it a little bit more pleasant for shooting video. So that, uh, that covers who would buy the 5D3. So um, uh, in what situations would you choose these cameras over the 5D3? I think anybody who's going to be uh, putting this camera to use for a, a landscape type subject or an architecture type subject is going to probably reach for this type of camera first because it'll give them the highest possible resolution. And do you see there being different use cases for users of the S and the SR? Oh, yeah, they're very definitely. Uh, the, the landscape photography in particular, I think, is going to have the biggest benefit for the SR type camera because there are very few situations when you're shooting a natural landscape where you are going to run into the dangers of um, uh, moire or anti-aliasing that, uh, that might show up when you're shooting something more repeating lines type of subject, like maybe uh, a herringbone suit or um, you know, in certain kinds of architecture where uh, there are a lot of repeating lines. So can you uh, talk to us a little bit? This is the first time we've seen this sensor. Can you t uh, talk to us about the, uh, the noise performance and the dynamic range? Because I know um, those have been uh, concerns of, of some Canon users. Canon uh, is telling us that basically the dynamic range on this camera is equivalent to the 5D Mark III. I'm sure that you uh, at DP Review are going to be doing your own test to verify it once we get to the point of having testable cameras. Uh, but the uh, uh, noise levels, you know, essentially what you should expect is that they're going to be very similar to what you've seen from the 7D Mark II because of the fact that it's using essentially the same pixel size and the same processor. Now if, you, if you're getting the same pixel level performance but you have more pixels making up your image, um, Theory would suggest that that would allow you to, uh, to downscale the image and get actually lower noise at the image level. So we'd almost expect the ISO performance um, overall to be better than the 7D2 if it's the same at the pixel level. Um, so we were a little surprised to see the, uh, the maximum ISO is, uh, is limited lower than on the uh, 7D2. Do you know why that is? Canon feels that the idea on their evaluation of uh, noise levels is, is they do it independently for every camera they test. Uh, so they're not necessarily saying that, well, the 7D Mark II is such and such, therefore this camera is going to be the same. Uh, they just look at the, the, the actual test results that they're able to produce and they make their decision based on that. You've talked to us about uh, landscape and architecture photography, um, but you also mentioned uh, uh, wedding photography and passing. Um, are there any features in, this, in these cameras that would be uh, particularly useful for that kind of shooter? For the wedding photographers, a lot of times they're concerned about it being able to control the file size. So one of the things that we've done on this camera is to uh, include the MRAW and SRAW functions uh, that help to uh, maintain the editing capability of RAW but at a lower effective pixel resolution and smaller file size. Uh, also, uh, the autofocus on this camera is at the same level as the 5D Mark III. And I believe the cameras have uh, other features to make sure that the 
images as stable as possible to make sure you're really getting that 50 megapixel resolution. Um, I believe there are some new mirror lockup modes and uh, and a new shutter mechanism. Do you want to talk to us about uh, about those? And, uh, the uh, mirror mechanism is what's really been upgraded uh, physically. Uh, that was changed from the spring-driven mechanism that we have in the 5D3 to a motor-driven mechanism now in the 5DS and SR that is far more sophisticated in terms of how it reduces vibration uh, throughout the entire cycle of running that mirror. In addition to uh, those physical things, then uh, we've also done this mirror lock that you mentioned where basically you can predetermine the delay between pressing the shutter button and raising the mirror and then the camera firing. Well, thanks ever so much for your time. Um, we very much look forward to getting these uh, products into the lab and testing them as soon as we can. We're looking forward to seeing the results.